full disclosure up front, I'm not a developer or anything like that. I'm really just at this point in Codecademy, and that's literally all I know. So if you have questions and stuff, I probably will not have an answer for you. But the reason I'm making this video is to go over this off-platform T-Cozy project because this is the first time with Codecademy where there is no solution provided or any way for you to check your work. So what I tried to do was actually like recreate it as close to the design as provided. And the reason for that is because when I was looking online for like solutions or, or ways to check my work, a lot of people kind of just did their own thing. But I was really curious to see like how close am I to what they were envisioning. So that's what we're going to go over here. And I tried to keep it as close to this little mock up as possible. And I also tried to use Flexbox as much as possible because that was kind of the point. This happens at the end of the Flexbox unit. So with all of that out of the way, Let's just go ahead and get into it. So I just tried to keep everything as simple as possible. So my folder structure literally just contains the images, the index file, and the style file. And then with the HTML, I was able to do this with 99 lines of code, which is also including some notes and some spaces. And then with the CSS, it was, I think, like 170, let's get the right number, 170 lines of code with even more spaces because there's kind of spaces between all of those various declarations. And the end result of my project ended up looking like this. And if we look at the redline document, you can see that it's very similar, especially if we go to, I think, just a little bit wider than like 1200. So somewhere in here, we were given a width of 1200 right here for the R mission. And so if I go in here and we kind of do a little inspection and let's go out of responsive mode and just take this to a little bit wider than 1200. Okay, something like that. We can then see that it does look very similar to what they were asking for. So I'll just quickly go through everything. And of course, I'll probably provide a link uh, to download my project if you just want to compare and contrast things. So let's go ahead and jump into the code real quick. So with the HTML, I was just trying to keep everything as simple and straightforward as possible, nothing fancy. So the head is literally just the title and the link to the style sheet. And then with the body, we've obviously broken it down into the various sections. So the navigation bar, this sort of company slash mission statement, the T of the month section, the locations section, and the contact us section, which is just this thing, and then the copyright information. So the first thing that you kind of have to tackle or that might get you into trouble is the fixed header and then kind of the relative positioning off of the fixed header. So for example, you can see here for the main section, the ID was set as mission. And then if we go into the style CSS and we find the mission, you'll see that our position is relative and then top we've had to set 70 pixels. And I've had to do that for all of the kind of top level portions of the section. So when we get to T of the month, you're gonna see basically the exact same thing, position relative, top 70, and then I'm setting an additional margin to give us the spacing in between. The one thing that I couldn't figure out, and it was outside of the scope kind of of this assignment and i think maybe javascript is the best solution for this i tried to use a css solution but it wouldn't work for me where if i go to the featured t section or the location section or the mission section it is offset by 70 pixels so this isn't right like we obviously want it coming to here but when i click it it drops us down to there and again i tried to do a little bit of research and google searching and i couldn't figure out a really easy solution to make that work with locations and mission it really doesn't matter but it's still not going to 
the perfectly or the right position. So really, if I click mission, it shouldn't be dropping at all. And obviously, if I hit locations, luckily, it's at the bottom, so it doesn't matter. But um, again, that was the one thing I couldn't solve. So if somebody has a really easy and basic solution to solve that just with CSS, let me know. Um, and yeah, I'll incorporate that in. So with each of the sections as well, I tried to use Flexbox where appropriate. So we can see with the ID of navbar, the navigation area, when we go in here to the navbar, we have given it a flex, we've aligned items center. So that's the vertical in this case, the vertical axis. And we've justified the content as space between, which that's going to basically force this hard left. That's going to force the other item hard right. So um, the items inside of the container, which in this case is going to be this image and then the unordered list. So those are the two item elements, and those are what we'll have to grab when we want to do our margin away from the side. So when we go back in here and we look at nav menu, that is the container that is holding this. And then it's offset, you know, slightly same thing with the logo and the image. And this is all just based on using this as our guide. Um, one of the cool things with some of these like browser tools is like you can do stuff like play with the flex containers just inside of here. So if you're stuck or you're stumped on something, it's very useful. So let me, sorry, let me go back into the, uh, nav ID here. This will actually show us. So what's cool is like when I hover over a line items and I have it center, you can see that in the browser, what that's actually referring to, or you can see what the space between is referring to. So I find that to be really cool and really useful when you're playing with the flex containers and trying to come up with the right solution. And again, you can actually just come in here and, you know, you can change stuff like from wrap to no wrap, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is really cool. And I didn't know that until after I had finished the project, but it would have sped me up when I got stuck. So the one thing that you'll notice that's like a little bit off and a little bit wrong is what happens with the text of all of the other headings with the exception of location. So again, I base this off of 1200 pixels. So I wasn't really thinking about what would happen if I narrowed it out more than that. So you can see that in these cases, the headings are all aligning except for locations. And that's because locations, if we look at like the design file needs to be like centered vertically against this background image. Whereas with something like T of the month, doesn't like the height is not really a factor so that's the reason and, and i'll break it down in the code and explain it in hindsight i probably should have done everything consistently but um obviously i did not so let's just look at and see what i came up with here so let's start with the t of the month okay so you can see the breakdown here in the html we have the entire section which is everything and then we have it broken down with the H2, the H4, and then the div for the featured T section where we're gonna do our flex box. So when we go in and we look at the style, you can see that at that top level, we do have just that position relative offset by 70 pixels top, and then the margin um, to give us space between these two sections. And that was just the way I did it. Then I set two kind of universal rules for the T of the month H2, that's that, and the T of the month H4, which is this, and all of these ones down here where a margin bottom of 20 is being applied just so that we can create the separation. So now when we go in and we look at the featured T's, that is the div right there. So again, that's the container. We can see that our margin was set to zero in auto. And that's really important because that's actually what then puts it in the center um, left and right. So when we're beyond 1200 or whatever, it's leaving it in the center of the page. And that actually took me a while to remember how to do that. So that was kind of embarrassing, but that's crucial to actually making this look like the design. Um, width was set to a thousand pixels. That is based on that container width being defined for us here in the design. 
um, display is flex, flex wrap. We chose wrap, which is what allows it when it runs out of room to go down to the second line. And then we have our justify content of center. So we can see what this looks like when we kind of inspect the area. So we'll inspect and then let's inspect the div so that we can uh, see this container. That's the one I need to inspect. So if we turn the justify content off, you can see that it does not center them out. It's just kind of creating a list. If we have wrap turned off, then it puts them all into one row. So that was what I needed to do to make sure that it actually would display out the way that I wanted it. And then as we go deeper, we can look at the actual like T containers themselves. This is the class. So this is referring to all of them. And there really wasn't much I did apart from setting a small margin bottom and then setting a margin right to try to match up what it looked like in the design. So that was the one area where there was just kind of like trial and error. So when we go in here and look at it, we want, I believe these ones. Yeah, and it should apply it to all of them. So if I was to go in here and I would start to like bring this value up very quickly, it then messes it up. So I tried to fine tune and find like the exact amount. And I guess I could have done 33, but I guess I settled on 32 for whatever reason. And then we can see what we're doing with the margin bottom. That was just to kind of set it again to look like what it was looking like in the design. And that's really all there is to it because the other things are defined for us in the design. So we know that this is 300. 300, 300, and then there's some space that's going to exist in between that's going to eventually equal us out to like a thousand pixels. Um, so when we go in and we look at the code there for the image and some of this stuff, there's there's very little that we had to define. Um, let's see, where did I put all of those things? So I probably did this not the best way. I just defined the widths inside of the HTML tag. So I could have done that in CSS, but I just decided to do it this way for whatever reason. I must have felt like that was the faster solution. So that's where that kind of width is being set for each of those um, different little items inside of T of the month. So I've actually gone in and made one little change, which was to change the height of this to 550 as compared to 500, because then it looks a little bit closer to the design. Um, there's obviously some slight little error with the design because 500 pixels actually is going to cut it off much, much lower here. So I've just made that tweak to try to make it look a little bit closer um, to what it's showing in the design. But yeah, that was kind of the best I could do with it, best interpretation anyway. So let's break down what's going on. So here in the HTML, we have our section for the locations, and that's containing everything. And in this case, we actually have done a display of flex. And so that is going to include this locations heading, whereas in our other examples, it did not. So that's why this exists here. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to put locations in the center of the image, which is sort of what I interpreted from the design. So you can see that we have our display of flex. And then the critical thing here is that we change our flex direction to column so that the items are going you know, top to bottom as compared to left to right. And now justify content is actually referring to the vertical axis. And when we put it center, it goes center. So if you don't think to do um, the position change from row to column, you will be very stumped with how to accomplish this. So that's kind of the critical part there. And then you can see that I've put it in the center. So then the other area where we've done the flex container is with those three different sections right here. So we'll jump back over and we can see that that is going to be related to this locations container. All right, where we've done a display of inline flex. I think we could have got away with also just doing flex here. I don't think it would have made a difference. And then we've justified the content center. But by doing inline flex, I know that each of these is going to exist on the same line. But again, that's going to be based on like the width of the section, which is 1200. So I don't think it would make a difference, but you know, it's here anyway. And then we've justified the content center. So if we go in and we look, add it. Let's go and find that section. I believe it is this one here. If we turn center off, we will see that it will go all the way to the left. So there we have it.
So then store locations is the class. So that is then going to determine what actually is going on and what things look like inside each of these, where we have a width of 300 pixels. Um, the background color is black, margin right. You know, that's the space in between these. And, you know, all of this is very straightforward. The one thing that I had to do was like manually set the opacity in here. Um, I'm not sure why exactly I did that, but I think if I didn't have this rule defined, the difference between the two of these was so small. So I went in here and added that on, um, despite the fact that I believe for the body, we're supposed to have that opacity down to 0.9. But regardless, that's what we've done here. And so we've just then set the hover to go to opacity of one. So <laughs> nothing fancy there at all, just trying to kind of mimic what they've done with the design specs. So with the contact section, this is another example where we've changed the flex direction to column. And in this case, we have this align item set to center. So that would refer to the um, horizontal axis because we've changed the direction to, to column. And I don't actually think it's like doing anything because we also have that margin zero and auto in play. So I think if I actually turn that off, um, the center one, nothing would really happen, but it's good to just have it there as a safety valve. And you can see how that moves around like so. And then the final thing that gave me a little bit of trouble was with the footer. So upon adding in all of these relatives and these tops, when I created a new section, and I added this, I actually couldn't get it visible or I couldn't get like the margin to be correct. So you can see I have this margin of 90, which is probably actually equaling more of like a margin of 20 um, because of those 70 offsets. So somewhere down the line, you'll find like there's like a minus 70 in the box model that like you have to compensate for. I think it's this one here. You can see that negative 70 there. So if I go in and... I turn this margin bottom off, you can see that I'm not able to have that margin there, but by adding that back in, it creates like a 20 pixel one. It's weird. So that might also explain some of my problems with, no, it doesn't really. I was going to say with that featured T thing, but it actually doesn't. So anyway, that was one thing I had to do just to make sure that I could get the margin the way that I wanted it to be. And that's it. That's how I went about doing this tea cozy project. Again, if you actually want to look through stuff, I'll share it. Um, I defined some of these things here. I just kept it so simple. I just defined those things universally, basically just in the body selector, I believe. And yeah, just kind of went about my business. Not sure if this opacity of 0.9 is really reflected everywhere, but I believe when I take it off, it is. You'll see everything get brighter. So I'm not sure why I had to then go and reset that there. Maybe somebody has a good answer for me. Doesn't matter. Um, this was my end result. And hopefully this has been helpful for you if you were like me and you were looking for a solution that looked very similar to the design. Thanks.